أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم آمن الرسول بما إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا 
صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا أبو القاسم محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله thank you إمران لي that soulful recitation was by Imran Ali Khaki, the grandson of Mullah Abd Rasul Khaki, one of the icons we are here to honor today. Imran Ali is a graduate of the King's College in London with a master's in economics and a successful entrepreneur running in focus optations. As a madrasa teacher, his passion is to treat taj Tajweed as an art that he has mastered so magnificently and is an internationally renowned Kari in our community. Thank you once again uh, for that beautiful recitation. Jazakallah. Welcome to this memorial event. In Gujarati, we say Lok Sabha, we say Shok Sabha, a time-honored tradition. Indeed, to maintain such worthwhile traditions is one of the focus areas of the World Federation Koja Heritage Project a World Federation Department dedicated to preserving and promoting our incredible heritage as the Koja Shia ethnic community. Our mission is to collect and document and preserve the legacy of our ancestors for posterity. And we believe that the Koja Heritage Project will help us to appreciate the struggle and the adventures of our forefathers, engender pride in the rich cultural heritage of our community, and also take lessons, as this event will reveal to us today, from different phases of the community life to make better decisions as we evolve as a community. So to that event, or to that end, this event is quite a milestone. Sadly, in the past few months, this community has lost those incredible human beings who were living legends in their lifetime. But as I say, so while we remember them for who they were today and how they touched the Koja community, our esteemed presenters from around the world will also focus on the all important theme of what legacy of learning did each of them leave for the community. Today, we honor three such iconic personalities each of whom made a difference in their own ways, sharing their unique talents in a special way and special modes for the betterment of the community and humanity. One was an amazing literary figure who literally, and the pun is intentional, loomed large, especially in the Gujarati speaking world. The other was a humble sage, renowned expounder of Fekh, who was self taught like many of the Koja Mullahs of the yesteryears. And the third was a remarkable visionary, 
a critical thinker who advise on strategy, not just to our community, but at the highest level of the state government here in the USA. So while their contributions were in different spheres, as we will learn from our esteemed presenters today, they had one common point, a passion to serve and make a difference to community and humanity. So without further ado, let us begin. And following the Koja journey of faith, today we will begin this series of tributes starting from the subcontinent, paying tribute to Al-Hajj, Marhum Munawar Ali Salil, and then to Africa, paying tribute to the venerable Marhum Mullah Abd Rasul Khaki, and then eventually to the Western world by remembering our dear friend Marhum Muttawa Dato. Therein lies a depiction of the trajectory of our community journey of faith, a well-known community which is now spread around the world. So now it's my honor to introduce Sheikh Abbas Kirmani, son of Al Haj Munawar Ali Salil, who is a banker in Dubai, also a Mobalik, and an eloquent Zakir Hussein, following in the footsteps of his father, Al Haj Munawar Ali Salil. He will be followed by Al Haj Musaddiq Lakhani, a retired microbiologist who worked with the United Arab Emirates Ministry of Health for 35 years, now retired, living in Melbourne. And I must say, awake at 4 a.m. in the morning just for this event. Thank you, Musadik Bhai. And a keen promoter of the Gujarati language. He's also a notable Urdu poet himself and has published Nawai Be Nawa, an Urdu work of poetry in the praise of the Ahl Bayt al So, Momin in E Pela, Kehu Emne Dawate Kalam Apu, Be Shabda. के समस शिया आलम ना गौरव समा मुनवर सलीन यू व्यक्तित्व अलग अने अनोखो हतु तेमनी जाकरी नी छटा अल्लाह तरफ ती मरेली एक बख्शिश हती अने तेओ शायरे अहल बैत अने एक नवा कान पढ़ता एमनी कल्पना मा सदाई ताजगी टपकती हती एमना शब्दों मा जाने आबे कौसर ना जाम छलके चे एवू आपने Malum Tatu Fatu and a Temni Pratishta Mati Sadai Hamdardi and a Lagrina Swas Temati Prasarta Hata Akadim Ne Emni Sate Ek interview Ni Tuck Sampri Hati and a Temni Yado Ti and a Amuk Shano Tame Niasu Tiar Fad, whom Sheikh Abbas and a Murabi Musadi Bine, Andri Rupe, Beshabdo, Pesh Karwani request Karis. So please, every team, roll the tape now. Takon chou ki chye kai pon azadari Hussain ti saambhali ne nikde ki baare abhi ne gani gani maafi saate khuda tu mene maaf kar jay ala Muhammad mene maaf kar teb Hussain ne bola ho chou na Hussain abhi jaise bilkul aus tamar teb me pila Hussain ni bani tu jao. And in a Banu Martini, Fukat, Bo, Nan, Bo, Assange, Bo, Assange. Je Hussein Nepassan, Itam Nepassan. Je Hussein Nepassan, Itam Nepassan, Nahu. Sometimes Hussein, Takayama, Kema, and Amas, Pari Saktata. Pon Hussein, Nina Mas, Notina, Asal Namas Jeriti. Asal Namas Jeriti. Hussein, Din Ko Baksha has in the Gitune, Kesar Kata, Dia, Bayat, Magarna Kitune, Rava Ravim, Wood Sajdakia, Dame Akir, Namas Jatiti, Dunyas, Rokli Tune. Asal Rukne Namas Jeriatu. Hussein, Hap Maksa Chemaruyan Askarino, Kemaksa Desha, Hal Min Nasirin Yen Sura, Sava Lak, Egamber of Vilache, Madad Mate, Hussein Potani Zat Mate, Madad Nathim Angiria. Hussain, I have told you about this. 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 पर चटला मक्तलों में वाईचा जा हमें भी मुस्लिमों नाम तो मशहूर थे क्यों बल्कि आठ 
લખવાવાળા છે અને જે પણ રિવાયતો રાબી લખવાવાળા હતા ને આબીદ મુસ્લિમ કેવી મુસ્લિમ રિવાયત કી હે આવી કોઈ દિવસ જે જોઈ છે ને એ જ લખે છે એ કોઈનો નહીં એવા આઠ જણાએ લખી છે કે સૈયદ ઝૈનબ અને હઝરતે ઇમામ હુસૈનના પગ ક્યાંય લગઝીશ નથી થયા ક્યાંય નથી થયા લગઝીશ આ ચીજો અમલમાં ઉતારો જ્યારે પણ કોઈ દુઃખ આવે છેલ્લા શબ્દો છે જ્યારે તકલીફ આવે ને ઇના લીલા હિ વય ના લે રાજ આજે ક્યાં ગયા આપણે કાંધો આપતા વખતે હદીસ છે કોઈ પણ મુસીબત આવે એ ના લીલા હિ વય ના લે રાજ એનો તરજુમો હતો અને કરો એ મોલાના આપશે તમે નથી કરતા આમ હવે કોઈને સામે કહો ઇના લીલા હે વય ના રાજ એવું અરે કિસકા ઇંતકાલ હો ગયા હું આને ચેન્જ કરવા માગું છું તમે દુઆ કરો અલા મને હવે તો જવાના દિવસો મારા આવી ગયા છે ડોક્ટર સાહેબ સેન્ડીની સોળાએ લખ્યું મેં કીધું હું સાડા છ કલાક નહીં દેવ સાહેબ ખોદા કરોડો મુનોવર પે બે બેરિસ્ટર મૃત્યુ સાહેબ લાખાને કીધું હતું ખોદા કરોડો મુનોવર પેદા કરી શકે છે એ કુન ફય કુન છે મેં કુન ફય કુનની તફસીર લખી છે આ ગોનેગાર હાથોથી તરજુમો શું છે ડોક્ટર સાહેબ હો હો જા બરાબર છે ને આ તરજુમો છે ને તફસીર મેં લખી છે કે એ નથી મારો ખોદા કુનથી પણ આગળ છે અલ્લાહ અકબર એ કુનનો પણ મોતા જ નથી કારણ કે કુન માટે જબાન ગલું બે મેં તફસીર લખી આ તુલા બશીર રજફી ને મોકલાવી ને આપ તમે સાઇન કરો તો હું પ્રિન્ટ કરું એની સાઇન આવી ગઈ હવે પ્રિન્ટમાં મૂકી છે આ અઠ્ઠાવીસમી મારી કિતાબ હશે ક્યાં ચારસો લખવાવાળો જે લોકોએ મને છોટે હાજી નાજીનો લો હું કાંઈ નથી મનોવર સલીલ મારી કોમને ખુદા સલામત રાખે અઝાદારોને સલામત રાખે એટલી અઝાદારી થાય છે એટલા માતમ કેટલા નવા નવા પડવાવાળા વયા ગયા લખવાવાળા વયા ગયા પડવાવાળા ગણા થઈ હવે આ મન કબત ઉપર આવી ગયું ગુજરાતી શાયરો નથી કવિઓ ગુજરાતી નથી કેમ કે જન્મે છે શાયર જન્મ નથી લેતો ડૉક્ટર નથી લેતો ઇન્જિનિયર એ તો મા જન્મ આપે છે એના પછી એની તાલીમો તરબિયત જે પ્રમાણે એને રુઝાન સ્ટરિંગ છે એના હાથમાં એ આમ કરશે તો આમ જશે આમ કરશે તો આમ જશે એમાં શાકે રહો એમાં કપૂર બિસ્મિલ્લાહમાનરહીમ અસલામ વાલેકુમ જમીયન તમામ તારીફ ખુદા કે લીએ હૈ ઔર તમામ દરૂદ વ સલામ ઝાત મહમ્મદ ઔર આલ મહમ્મદ કે ઉપર અલ્લાહ મસલ મહમ્મદ વ આલ મહમ્મદ વાજુલ ફરજ સબસે પહેલે મેં શુક્રગુજાર હું ઓર્ગેનાઇઝર કા કે ઇન્હોંને ઇસ ઇવેન્ટ કો મુનકદ કિયા તાકે હમ અપને બુઝુર્ગોં કો અપને ખિદમત ગુઝારો કો યાદ રખેં ઓર દેખે કિતને સ્ટ્રગલ કે સાથ કિતની મહેનત કે સાથ ઉન્હોંને કમ્યુનિટી કે લીએ ઓર ઇન્સાનિયત કી ખિદમત કી હૈ ઓર મેં ખલાકન તમામ ઓર્ગેનાઇઝર્સ કા પાર્ટિસિપન્ટ્સ કા બિલખુસખુસ મુસતિક ભાઈ કા શુક્રગુજાર હું કે વોને હમારે વાલદ ઓર દૂસરે મરૂમીન કે લીએ અપને ખ્યાલ કા ઇઝહાર કરને કે લીએ હમારે સાથ અલી ઇન ધ મોર્નિંગ જમા હુએ હૈ બગેર કિસી તમીદ કે જો કુછ મેં હમને હમારે વાલદ સે સીખા યા દેખા ઉસમે એક સબસે બડી ચીજ એ થી કે વો અપને બુઝુર્ગો કો કભી નહીં ભૂલા ઉન્હોંને અપને એલ્ડર્સ કો અપને ખિદમત ગુઝાર કો જિન્હોંને કમ્યુનિટી કી ખિદમત કી હૈ ઉનકો નહીં ભૂલતે થે ઉનકા બાર બાર ચાહે વો પબ્લિક ગેધરિંગ હો પબ્લિક સ્પીકિંગ હો યા પ્રાઇવેટ ગેધરિંગ હો ઉન મન કો તસ્કરા કરતે થે ઉનકી કોન્ટ્રીબ્યુશન્સ કો ઉનકે અચીવમેન્ટ્સ કો વો હંમેશા સે ડિસ્ક્રાઇબ કરતે થે બતાતે થે ઉનકા મોકિફ હંમેશા એ રહા કે આજ જો હમ ફલ ખા રહે ખાસ તર પે કે મેસેજ યુથ્સ કે લીએ નઈ જનરેશન કે લીએ હૈ કે આજ જો હમ ફલ ખા રહે ને ये उस हमारे बुजुर्गों की मेहनतों का नतीजा है कि जिन्होंने इस दरख्त को परवान चढ़ाया है जैसे कि मैंने कहा कि वो अपने बुजुर्गों को हमेशा याद रखते थे खास तौर के पर आपने नाम सुना अभी के हाजी गुलाम अली नान जी उनका तस्करा करते थे जो इनके साथ बुजुर्ग हस्तियां गुजरी है जिनसे उन्होंने सबक सीखा मोन मल्लाम रशी तुराबी खाला मकाम हो और मुला असगर कल अल्लाह मकाम उनके दर्जात को बुलंद फरमाए वो हमेशा उनका तस्करा करते थे क्योंकि हम अपने माजी से कट के नहीं जी सकते हैं और दूसरी 
इनकी लाइफ में हमने ये चीज देखी है कि जब इंसान किसी चीज का इरादा करता है ना तो फिर कोई चीज उसके लिए बैरियर्स नहीं होती है हमने उनसे ये सीखा और इनकी लाइफ में हमने देखा कि उस जमाने में देखिए एक और हमारे यंगस्टर्स और यूथ के लिए हम सब के लिए एक मैसेज ये भी है कि उन्होंने अपनी कभी किसी लाइफ पर किसी चीज को कंप्रोमाइज नहीं किया फैमिली लाइफ भी चलती रही उनकी सोशल एक्टिविटीज भी चलती रही और कलाम लिखते भी रहे कि उनका हमेशा मौकफ था कि अल्लाह ने जो सलाहियत जिसको दी है वो उसको उस तरीके से इस्तेमाल करे अहले कलम हो अहले मेंबर हो शायर हो वो उस चीज को उसको इस्तेमाल करे और कोई चीज उनकी जिंदगी में बैरियर नहीं रही कैसे ही हालत क्यों ना रहे हो लेकिन उन्होंने कम्युनिटी प्लेटफॉर्म पर भी और कम्युनिटी से प्लेटफॉर्म से हटकर भी खदमत खल के लिए जहां तक हो सका उन्होंने कोशिश की यहां तक के खोजा कब्रस्तान के अंदर जो कराची में है वहां जाते थे वहां जो लोग कब्रस्तान की देखभाल करते उनसे मिलते थे उनकी परेशानी को सुनते थे और हद तो इम्कान कोशिश करते थे कि उनकी परेशानी दूर हो और इनकी जिंदगी में हमने ये भी देखा कि ये जरूरी नहीं है कि जब इंसान कोई खदमत खल करता है तो वो किसी पोजीशन को तो करे नो चाहे पोजीशन ना हो लेकिन अगर खदमत खल का अगर इंसान को जज्बा है और गुरबत अल्लाह की गुरबत के लिए है तो फिर कोई चीज दरमियान में रुकावट नहीं बनती है और जैसे मैंने कहा कि जो नमत अल्लाह ने उनको दी जो इंसान को दे अगर अल्लाह ने उन्हें उन्हें अच्छी आवाज दी लिखने की सलाहियत थी और खास तौर पर इनकी एक पहचान जो वो कलाम पढ़ा करते थे और कलाम इनके बहुत ही मुहिब दोस्त शायर अलबैद अल्लाह उनकी मफफरत करे और जन्नत के आला मकाम उनको था फरमाए मरूम निषाद नूरानी उनका कलाम था सदा अली नाम ले बड़े अच्छे अल्फाज से उन्होंने उस कलाम को लिखा और हमारे वालिद ने उसे अपनी आवाज में उस कलाम में और चार चांद लगा दिया उनकी पहचान ये बन गई थी सदा अली नाम ले और जहां तक जिक्र अल बैद का ताल्लुक है तो ऐसा महसूस होता था उनकी हयात के अंदर के जिसे हम कहते हैं कि इश्क हुसैन इश्क मौला ये इश्क पैदा हो नहीं सकता कि जब तक के इंसान को मारिफत ना हो उनकी ऐसी मारिफत थी कि बस जहां हुसैन का तस्करा है हम कितनी बार उनसे कहते थे कि पापा रात को है हालात ठीक नहीं है लेकिन वो जाते थे गांव में जाते थे वहां जाकर मजालिस पढ़ते थे यानी इसने अपनी जिंदगी के अंदर किसी चीज को बैरियर नहीं समझा जैसा मौका मिला वैसे उन्होंने खिदमत अंजाम दी और जैसे मैंने कहा कि बस एक या दो मिनट जैसे उन्होंने कहा कि मैंने कहा कि इश्क हुसैन मारिफत मारिफत का ये आलम था कि उनके जो साथ के लोग जो कभी जो मिलते थे तो हमें ये कहते थे कि आपके वालिद के साथ हमने जो जहारत पड़ी है वैसी जहारत मुझे वैसे नहीं हो रही और उस वक्त जमाने में 1957 या 1958 का वाक्य बताते हैं लोग कि ऐसी जहारत रही थी शिप के अंदर कि उस वक्त उन्होंने किताब लिखी थी उसका नाम था जाबी तारे कदमे कदमे बस हमने इनकी जिंदगी सीखा कि इंसान जितना उससे हो सके वो खिदमत खल करे और अपने बुजुर्गों को कभी ना भूले यही हमारा सरमाया है और इन्हीं से हमें आगे सबक लेकर आगे चलना है वसलाम वरहमल वरक जमीन Can you please unmute yourself? I'm sorry about that. Salam alaikum. Uh, indeed, it's not an easy task to talk about someone whom you have known for more than half a century, and to say something about 
towering personality like Alhaj Munawar Sadil is even more difficult. Losing this uh, impressively high personality is not losing an individual, rather it is a loss of an era. An era which carried all beautiful grace of our culture, our language, our tradition and our faith. He represented that era. His was a multifaceted personality, every facet of which qualifies uh, for detailed discussion. However, due to time constraint, I will just briefly touch on some of his attainments. He was a profound alim, a genuine zakir, a heart-touching poet, a knowledgeable linguist, a sincere community leader, an able presenter, and above all, a true lover of Ahl Bayt salam. After partition, when our elders migrated from Gujarat to Karachi, they had very little to relate to in the new atmosphere. They did not have anywhere to go and seek spiritual and cultural satisfaction. To cater to this need, Mephile Jafri was established by Khojas coming from Gujarat. For those who are not familiar with Karachi, let me tell you, Mephile Jafri is situated in Old City, diagonally, diagonally opposite to Jinnah's birthplace. Now, this mehfil, uh, after it was established, soon become, became religious and cultural center, uh, which was frequented by, by the newcomers, by, by the new migrant Khojas. The term uh, resident alim was not coined in those times. But for every practical purpose, Sayyid Qasim Ali Qazmi, properly known as Mia Bapu, served in that capacity in Mephile Jafri. But on special occasion, Alhaj Munawar Salil used to deliver majalis at Mehfil Jafri in Kharadar, Karachi. I, being uh, alumni of Mehfil Jafri Madrasa and living in the vicinity, used to go there regularly. It was in my preteen year. It was I was in my preteen years, and Marhum in his early youth. Tall and handsome man with his iconic Sherwani and Jinnah cap, he made impressive appearance as he climbed the member. The eloquent style of his orator or oratory was very effective in delivering the message and was liked by people of all age. He recited Majalis in Urdu and Gujarati with equal fluency. And this took him 
to many countries in Middle East, Africa and Europe. It was this style of oratory that earned him the title of Fakhruz Zakirin, given to him by no other person than Marhum Mulla Azgar. May Allah bless him. Karachi once saw regular Gujarati Musalima and Muqasida, the poetry sessions in praise of Ahl al-Bayt al-Himussalam. And these uh, poetry sessions were attended by prominent poets, not only from our community, Shia community, but from all Muslim sects. Al-Hajj Munawar Salil was one of the most popular poets and was well received every time when he recited in those sessions. His Urdu poetry also was equally mesmerizing. The most impressive aspect of his life was his love for Gujarati language and how he strived to keep it alive in Pakistan. For 45 long years, he managed to get two Gujarati programs televised per annum on state television. And this continues. One in Muharram and the other in Rabi Awal. Muharram uh, for Imam Hussain salam and in Rabi Awal for Nabi alayhi salatu was salam. And uh, he single-handedly managed to tackle all the bureaucratic hurdles that he met. I'm privileged to have worked with him very closely for the revival of Gujarati language in Pakistan. His leadership and guidance in this regard has kept the struggle going on so far. But we have lost the warrior. In 2018, Karachi Jamaat organized a Gujarati day to emphasize the importance of using mother tongue. Al-Hajj Munawar Salil was guest of honor in that program. I was there as one of the speakers. That was the last time I heard him speaking and the last time I saw, saw this great man. We all have different memories of uh, Marhum Al-Hajj Munawar Salil, but one thing they all have in common is the way he dedicated himself to the community. And that is the legacy that he has left. Selfless dedication towards serving the community. His endless struggle to preserve our culture, our history, our language. And these should be remembered by following what he stood for. The great long life that Marhum has lived and the effectual accomplishments that he has made cannot be summed up in the few minutes that we have. May Allah bless him with Makfira and Rahman. May I request for Isal Sawab of the Marhum and all Marhumin a loud salawat. Par Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Ahsan jirakallah. Thank you, Sheikh Abbas and Musad Gibai, for those heartfelt words which gave us an insight into the life and time of the man.
that we remember today and whose legacy continues to remain with us. Sheikh Abbas mentioned the book, Jabir Tara Kadme Kadme. I've actually read this book, and it is a heart-rendering account, step-by-step -step account of that ziyara that Marhum did, and truly his love for the school of Ahlul Bayt al-Musalam is indeed so inspirational. May Allah bless the Marhum with his infinite mercy. And Musaddiq Bhai talked about Gujarati language. Allow me to end this session honoring him with his own words, which are so touching. He said, and I quote, Ansuoni vatche, khune jigar ni vatche, a khudana pyara paigamar na ghar ni vatche, bolwama karbala to be prahar ni vatche, pan samajwa beshe to umar bhar ni vatche. Karbala to che hakikat ma ghanu paase salil, kain to niyat dil ni, kain ek najar ni vach. Indeed, the words were so very powerful, and we continue to remember him. And inshallah, the struggle of maintaining, promoting the Gujarati language, which also happens to be one of the focuses of the Koja Heritage Project, will benefit from this call that's been made by Musaddiq Bhai today. Once again, thank you very much. Next, I'm honored to invite Mullah Muhammad and Alhaj Ahmad Bhai Jafar to pay tribute to the venerable Mullah Abdurrasul Khaki. Mullah Muhammad Kasmali, a native of Tanga, who had the opportunity to be mentored by Mullah Abdurrasul in his formative years, then went on to Mother Esai Rasul Akram in Nairobi, where he not only studied, but also uh, taught at the Madrasa. And later, he served as the resident alim of Peter Obo Jamaat until 2014. And he now concentrates on tabligh work in England and in Scotland. He will be followed by Murabi Ahmad Bai Jafar, born in Zanzibar. Ahmad Bai hails from the illustrious Devji Jamal family. It was his ancestor, Devji Jamal, who pioneered our journey to the school of Ahlul Bayt Ali Musalam. Ahmad Bai's long journey of service began as the chairman of the Islamic Education Board of Mombasa Jamaat, as well as the managing committee member and trustee and chairman of the Ethnology Sports Club in Mombasa. Straddling two continents, he has also served the chairman of the housing board of the managing committee and the managing committee member of our Jamaat in Karachi, the Kojai P. Rashi Aisnashi Jamaat of Karachi, as well as the Secretary and Treasurer and Vice Chairman of Jiba Karachi. Needless to say that this legacy of service of the family continues through his son, Sheikh Safdar Jafar, the current President of the World Federation, who will also be offering his closing remarks towards the end of this program. आ खादिम के जेने एवनी साथे एक इंटरव्यू नी जे तक सापड़ी हती तेमनी यादो थी अमुक शनो तमे नियासो त्यार बाद मुल्ला ममद अने मुराबी आमद भाई तेमनी अंजली रूपे बे शब्द पेश कर से तमे वीडियो नी अंदर जोसो के तेमनी इन के सारी अने खुलूस ने आपने दाद दे अने एटलू a interview under Jetame Jalak Niarso, Ketemri Ketli Hikmati Tere Mumbasa Jamat, Na Ek Prakran, Anne Vadiloni Tarif Kariche, Tebesha Kabile Dace, Anne Ajne, Duniana Apre Tamam Leaders Mate, Ek Ibrat Dayak, was to Taisha Ketch. Jareme Temne Salkario, Anne Prakyatata Emna Fikana Il Mate, Jarem Emne Salkario, के फिकना पंकायला निशरान तरीके ते के दो केवरी ते बनिया मोमिनी ते मनो जवाब ला जवाब असो ते तमे आ टेप नी अंदर सांबर सो एवी टीम प्लीज रोल द टेप मने 
घरे बेसन कर प्रिपेर कर जवाब दिवता बिलकुल ध्यान रखिए जवाब आप बचो पे पाचो मैंने शून्य सतोष तो ते अरबी फारसी के वर्ष सीखी गया था हाँ जुदू कर सो ते जुदो करो नही पहला नक्की कर आज मैं सामने रविवार चाल कोई वक्त घर्षण पर चाल तो। अरजीम
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين uh, Dear listeners, السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, First and foremost, uh, uh, I am grateful to the World Federation for organizing this uh, program in order to pay tribute to the iconic figures in our community. And I am honored to have been requested to speak about Marhum Mullah Abdul Rasul. Marhum Mullah Abdul Rasul, without any doubt, was a great blessing for the Koja community. Though he was stationed in Mombasa, but today his students are everywhere throughout the world. We ourselves have heard in this interview clip uh, as to how he described that when going to make presentation for classes, uh, preparation was important. And this is something that his students have noticed that whenever he used to come to the class, he was well prepared. But not only for the classes, even his, when delivering majalises, he was well prepared. And uh, even when participating and being asked to deliver something in seminars, Marhum Abdul Rasul used to present the subject so methodically and so logically that uh, all the participants would understand. So as far as uh, him being a teacher is concerned, uh, a lot has been mentioned in the tributes that have been paid to him. At the introduction of this session, uh, Al-Hajj Hasnain Bai mentioned that uh, the, these iconic figures are those who had passion to serve and make difference to the community. Marhum Mullah Abdul Rasul, had that quality, the passion to serve and bring about a difference in the community. What can I and us all take from the services provided by Marhum Mullah Abdul Rasul over a long period? What I noticed being close to him during those eight years that I was in Mombasa, was his ikhlas and his selflessness in order to serve the community. Ghusl, kafan, and dafan. Marhum Mullah Abdul Rasul trained three generations. I remember in late 73 or early 1974, he organized the first practical session of Ghusl and Kafan program. And I was there and I witnessed that. And this would continue. When we, uh, people of Mombasa would uh, know about this, that uh, whenever Marhum Mullah Abdul Rasul's shop, uh, he was the one who was dealing and selling uh, clothes, uh, would remain closed during the working hours, one would understand that someone has passed away. Marhum Abdul Rasul would leave out his business, but ensure that uh, that wajib kifai is attended to. And then also the training of people for three generations of how to give ghusl, kafan, and the dafan uh, ahkam and the rituals. Marhum Abdul Rasul did this uh, in the Mombasa community. That was not only for the, uh, for the gents, for men only, but Marhum Abdul Rasul even conducted classes teaching the ladies of how to cut the kafan and uh, the other uh, massiles regarding 
Ghusl and Kafan. So this services that he provided was not only for the uh, men, but also for women. The other aspect that I would like to look at is uh, the way he used to deal when matrimonial cases uh, would uh, appear, trying to bring about uh, the uh, reconciliation. Marhum Mullah Abdur Rasul would thoroughly look into that, uh, talk to both the parties, uh, and then after that, he would then prepare what he would uh, uh, consider as recommendation to be given to the Jamaat subcommittee, and the Jamaat subcommittee would follow that uh, recommendation. So this was another uh, aspect uh, where Marhum al uh, uh, did this work in a manner that ensured that uh, the Sharia laws was followed and the other aspect of the culture were, was also followed. One important point that I noticed uh, whilst being with him was uh, that uh, Marhum Mullah Abdul Rasul would never uh, shy away, that is shy away meaning that uh, when a person would even come to his shop, and I have noticed this, and I'm sure that there are others who have also noticed that if anyone would come to his shop also to ask any question that was related to fiqh or any other aspect, uh, Marhum al Rasul would not turn him or her away from there, but would answer the question, being there in the shop, attending to the business, but at the same time ready to answer the questions. In doing these services, and there are many uh, activities that Marhum al Abdursul participated in. Uh, there was one thing that Marhum al Abdursul uh, was very particular about, and that was punctuality. The students of the madrasa know about this, uh, and uh, even those people who had uh, appointments with him uh, were, uh, would know that if anyone uh, made an appointment with him, and if it was at this particular time, then he would be there, or if the person was to come to attend uh, to see Marhum al Rasul, then uh, he was expected to be punctual. Sometimes if someone was late, even for 10 minutes, uh, Marhum al Rasul would tell him that uh, uh, you are 10 minutes late. So that punctuality was important part uh, uh, of his activities. Uh, what impacted upon me the most when looking at the life of Marhum al Rasul and being with him, and even after I moved to Nairobi and from Nairobi then to uh, United Kingdom, uh, I, uh, whenever I would visit uh, Mombasa, my visit would be incomplete without visiting uh, Marhum Mullah Abdul Rasul. Reason being that uh, he was not only my teacher, he was not only my mentor, but I considered him to be my father. And I have made this quite public uh, in my speeches, wherever, when I talk about Marhum Mullah Abdul Rasul. It was the way with which, with the kindness, and as Hasnan Bai introduced him earlier to say, with that humility that he would deal with the sub, uh, with uh, the people, uh, Marhum al Rasul had great impact. And in all this, it was that selflessness, that khulus that I saw in him that uh, gave me the confidence to say, that if he was able to attend and success, successfully uh, perform those activities, it was that khulus 
and that selflessness to serve the community and to make the difference. As always, and now, as I would say, may Allah Azza wa Jal grant his maghfira to Marhum Mullah Abdul Rasul and shower his mercy upon him. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. شمع علم روشن دم بدم استاد بھی ایسے کہ ہر گھر میں ہے محترم فراغ جس نے جلائے ہیں قدم بقدم کئی دہائیوں کی محنت خدا کو ہی خبر معلوم یہ لیے جلتے رہیں گے ہر دور میں ہر دم This quotation that I've given presented to you is a part of one and a half inter our interview conducted by Mehboob Abdul Hussain Latha, the grandson of Ramsan Abdul Latha, who was the first Secretary General of Africa Federation. He conducted this interview in conjunction with Riyadh Abibi Wilbi who was then at that time the chairman of religious advisory board of Mombasa Jamaat. This interview takes Mullah Saab into the past, the present and the future. It is in fact a very informative and detailed interview which I would uh, request the World Federation to upload it because it is a treasure. As regards the legacy of learning which you leave behind, I've got seven points. I wish I can make it within seven minutes allocated to me. The first and the foremost is he gave utmost importance to fiqh throughout. In my discussion with him, I always ask him, Mullah Sahib, why do you insist on fiqh? all the time, of all other, in comparison to all other subjects. And he would say, fiqh is very important, not only in ibadat, but as well as muamilat. The businessmen, the self-employed people, the employees, they must understand what fiqh messiahs are regarding muamilat, without which they would end up in having Haram risk, which can be prevented. And fit is also very important for the leaders of the community, especially the trustees. The trustees must know what are the fiqh messiahs of waqt. What is the difference between waqtiyat and what is the difference between the trust? Not only that, the earnings of the trust should be, how should it be distributed? These are all covered up in the fiqh Masai. And if you don't give importance to fit, then we may end up somewhere not to our liking. And he expressed extreme concern about less content of fit in MCD. I think he made it very clear that we do appreciate that at this time we need to go for modern means of education for our children, but we should not ignore MCE. And he has repeatedly informed all the visitors from the World Federation that please have incorporate FIC as much as possible. Number two. He said that self-employed persons can impart better education and, and better service and effective service if they are self-employed rather than employed. He gave the examples of Haji Naji, Jafrali Asir, Haji Muhammad Jafar Sharif Devji, M.M. Jafar, 
Mulaskar's father, Mulaskar himself, and Munawar Salil and Mustabadatu, whom we are discussing today, Aji Gulam Singh, Wali Muhammad Darsi, and Ahmad Laka, and Murtaza Laka, and others. He said, these people have been entering services to the satisfaction of all and without leaving their businesses. And they have been more effective. And here the special message for Hausa students, that those students, for example, from Mombasa, who have gone for Hausa studies in Pum or Najaf, he has told them that, look, you have gone there, fine, it is in some keeping with the Quranic injunction that you should go out to seek knowledge, but you have been told that you should come back and serve your community and not hide yourselves in the home or Najaf in the pretext of acquiring further education. Service before self. Mullah Sahib just now mentioned that he served Khalisan with Iwajillah, not for recognition. In fact, when he was awarded al Baqir Award from Bal Federation, and Husseini Medal from Africa Federation, he just kept them in the cupboards. But he never mentioned to anybody that he got these awards. He was ready to serve at all times, maybe there be night or day, whether it's in the shop or outside, he was ready to serve. Humility. He was a humble person who could mingle with the children, with the elders, with the youngsters, with the ladies, or with the black and white, without any discrimination whatsoever. I would personally feel that he was a unique example of وَيُبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ لَذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ حَوْنَا He was a practical model in that direction. Number four, number five, importance of taqwa. He always insisted that a person must be God conscious all the time, whether it be in business, whether you are serving the community as a teacher or you are serving the community as a leader, taqwa is the criteria for leadership. If there is no taqwa, then I'm afraid, he said, then the community may be taken into the wrong direction, all with good intentions, but not with the purpose for which they are supposed to serve, because the religious principles may be compromised if there is no taqwa. Really, if there is no taqwa in leadership, you may find that the secular people may take over the leadership and ignore and or sacrifice rather the religious principles. Then number six, he said, seek knowledge from cradle to grave. And for that purpose, I found him that he was alert all the time, well informed, despite the fact he had problems with the eyes, with the ears. But whenever I visited him, he was so well informed about the international affairs. He was so well informed about the economic affairs of several countries, about the progress of Mombasa German, about the progress of our uh, regional federations and the World Federation. At times I wondered where did he get all this information that reflected his mental health that he was so well informed and he was so alert all the time that there is no time for him for depression. 
In fact, he was an example to the elders, especially during this COVID era. In fact, in, during the COVID times, I found him depressed only twice. Number one, in the early 20s, when the Ministry of Health declared that the bodies of the COVID affected dead bodies should not be under, they should be just put in the back and buried. At that time, he became restless. He said, what is this world moving towards to? And then he said, what will happen to myself? I have trained three generations to administer Gosal Kafan and Dafan. And am I going to end up without being buried? So he used to pace the floor and be buried all the time. And then he asked his children, look, if the Jamaat cannot do it, then you do it at home at my Give me a gusal kapan and give me a decent burial. Please don't dump me into the grave. The second time he got all the more depressed. He could not sleep for whole nights because when he was informed that although the Ministry of Health has given the permission that you can go ahead and administer gusal and kapan, there were some youngsters who were scared. The youngsters who were trained by him, some of them were scared. At that time, he could not could have sleepless nights for very many days, till the time came when he was informed that these youngsters have mustered the courage following the example of Stanmore Jamaat and Karachi Jamaat. At that time, he smiled and said, look, it appears that I will get a decent burial. He was very insistent that we must maintain our language and culture. And he cited the example of the Iranians. He said, wherever the Iranians went, whether they went to Iraq or whether to any other country, they have maintained the language and culture at the same time, and for that matter, he said that we, on our part, we have lost our culture. With the exception of Madagascar, whom he praised, that at least they have introduced Gujarati as a language. But he was not sure whether the French culture may influence them. Talking about our progeny in the West, he said, it appears that we are a vanishing community. And he had a very bleak picture of our community. And he very much concurred with Marhum Hassan Ali Mamajapa that indeed the Koja diaspora is an endangered species. وآخر الأعمال الحمد لله Uh, thank you very much, um, Ahmed Bai, and uh, thank you very much, Mullah Muhammad, for articulating those well deserved and uh, insightful comments and observations on the life of a man who is an icon. The Koja Mullahs, I believe, of the yesteryears are a species which are unique. As was related, that these Koja Mullahs, and if you look at the Koja documentary, we have had a whole segment on it, that they work during the day, they ran their businesses during the day, and did the league at night. They continue to serve the community. 
And this was something unique. There were the Koja Mullahs of yesteryears. And Mullah Abd Rasul was an exemplar of that spirit, as we have heard. May Allah bless him. And may Allah place him in the proximity of the Masumin alayhi salam. Next, it's my honor to introduce Alhaj Shabardala and Dr. Askar Moladina. Jeloko Gujarati ma kaye, to teo taruf na koe motaj nati. We talked about Gujarati. See the beauty of our Islamicized Gujarati language that we can express it poetically and not in poor English. But following the protocol, it would be remiss if I did not acknowledge their services. Alhaj Shabardala has a degree in law from the University of Reading and a leading insolvency practitioner. His illustrious community service spans decades, having held the positions of the Secretary General of the Council of European Jamaats, Secretary General of the World Federation, and then as a Vice President of the World Federation. We look forward to his insights as a nephew. His mother is the eldest sister of Marhum Muttaba. Fari Pasho Kaunchu ki atla bada shabdo angreji ma kewa pade, jare gujarati ma agar hu ket, to fakat mari ej kewa pade, ke emna bhanit tai che, ane apne samji gaya. See the beauty of Gujarati language? He will be followed by the former president of the World Federation and a long term community veteran, Dr. Asghar Moladina who had worked very closely with Mushtaba Marhum through very tumultuous times. He was also his close friend and a tennis partner, and we too look forward to his insights. But before I invite them, on a personal level, he was a friend and a close neighbor for nine years in California. And what was remarkable amongst the many attributes Marhum Mutaba had was his integrity. If any proof was required, one only had to listen to the tribute session organized by his professional colleagues a few weeks ago, which I was fortunate to attend. What truly emerged from me was that his persona, his akhlaq, and compassion, as described by his workmates, were exactly the same as we saw him operate in his engagement with our community. You know, a person who acts and appears the same Whatever the situation or the setting may be, is truly a man of integrity. And Marhum Muttaba was, beyond many things, a man of integrity, which was his fundamental characteristics. Amongst his many other attributes were the analytical skills that I had the opportunity to interview him on camera during the filming of the Koja documentary. And as you watch these minutes, Observe the keen sense of history and a positive outlook which defined his own life until his last days. Every team, please roll the video. The history of Zanzibar is replete with important personalities in the community, uh, like William Ahmad Darcy, uh, Hussein Rahim, your own grandfather. Uh, Marhum uh, Ahmad Laka. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, Ali Nathu. Ali Nathu is a remarkable figure in our communal history in Zanzibar. He was an immigrant from Nagalpur, Kutch in India in 1886. When he came to Zanzibar, he was famously known for his charity and generosity. In fact, he was affectionately nicknamed as, as Ali Manoti, mm. signifying a man with currency bills. What is remarkable about him is that after World War I, he was offered the knighthood by the British Empire. He declined that and in return asked for a favor. And the favor was that the crown would offer two holidays in Zanzibar, the 10th of Muharram and the 21st of Ramadan. These are epochal holidays in the Shia history. A man who forsaked his personal glory in favor of his faith and love of Ahlul Bayt signifies his charity in spirit and in his contribution. Most of us Zanzibar Mephils have played a great role uh, in the history of our community. Tell us a little bit about these Mephils in Zanzibar. Indeed, the Zanzibar Mephils were a vibrant part of the community there. 
you had the two main central mosques where people would gather to commemorate, commemorate the various functions. But outside of these two main centers, there was a number of mehfils with their own traditions and their own patterns. The most notable ones were Mehfile Abbas, Mehfile Ali Makam, Mehfile Panjatan, uh, Mehfile Shahi Khurasan, and a number of smaller mehfils where both the men would gather for extra uh, observances as well as separate mehfils for women, particularly like Mehfile Bibi Fatima. There was one particular mehfil that was known as Mehfile Private, and this is where the Mohibane Hussein the followers of and the lovers of Imam Hussein, who were gorgeous but had not yet converted to Shia Isnashri faith, would gather to observe their love for Imam Hussein. What's remarkable about these mehfils is the legacy it has played. Not only at the moment they were created were they part of the mosaic that allowed the community to be knit very tightly, but the legacy of it being an incubator for reciters who have grown up and since the Zanzibar revolution have dispersed throughout the world and have continued to provide the service in the message of Hussein. Post-independence upheavals in Zanzibar was a traumatic event for most of the community members. It came as a surprise politically. Uh, it was uh, something that was brewing given the political turmoil of the early 60s as a separation from the colonial British powers. As far as the community was concerned, the weekend that it happened in January 1964 was also the weekend where Marhum Ibrahim Sharif Deji had just passed away and a lot of the dignitaries from various other communities throughout Africa had come to pay their respects. So the community was not only mourning the loss of a great leader, but being taken over by a very traumatic, bloody revolution. What Zanzibar Revolution ended up doing in the end was create uh, an environment that was unbearable for most of the community to thrive, be it in their commerce, in their practice, there were curfew hours, there was fear, there was intimidation by the government, there was nationalization of property. So the means of charity, the, pro the properties that were supporting the orphans, the widows, were also now compromised. So the community started making uh, its path towards other areas for political asylum as well as economic, uh, economic prosperity and further education. This diaspora allowed practically the entire community in due course to leave Zanzibar uh, and settle in different parts of the world, notably, notably on mainland Africa and in Western Europe, be it Canada, Europe, UK or North America. It has left a scar, but from that scar arose a community that was again tightly knit. It allowed us then to realize we are part of a greater community, that we are not an insular community on an isolated island on the east coast of Africa, but we are part of a greater pan-Shia community throughout the world. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Fellow viewers, Salamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Thank you very much, Asnain Bai. And on behalf of the Datu family, it is an honor and privilege for me to be part of these esteemed guests as we take a moment in our lives to pose and reflect upon the immense contribution these three iconic Koja personalities have given us. If we wish to explore the legacy, it becomes important for us to take a short trip down the historical lane, understand their beginnings, their family connections, what drove them to do what they did in life, and the impact it has had on the lives of the people they have touched. By way of background, Marhum Mujtaba was born in Zanzibar and is one of six siblings, with him being at number four. He emigrated to the West for studies and ultimately set settled in the United States for over 40 years. He did his initial studies in Zanzibar, then secondary education in Dar es Salaam post-revolution, then went to Kenya for air levels before pursuing higher education in the United States. His top grades earned him a full scholarship to Columbia University 
one of the prestigious Ivy universities in the United States. This laid the foundation for his illustrious professional career in actuary for over 40 years. When he first started off, actuary was almost an unknown career path in the Koja community. I dare say he was probably one of the first Kojas in the community to qualify as an actuary. He took every opportunity to raise the profile of this profession and today quite a few from our community members are studying and practicing actuary because of the support and guidance he has given. Marhum Mujtaba had two driving factors in everything he did. Firstly, it was his family and secondly, to use his professional skills to have a positive impact in whatever he did. For many of his nephews and nieces, he was not only infamously known as Adda Bapa or in my case, Maji Muttaba, but he was much more than that. He was a mentor, a friend, and more importantly, somebody who had the ability to engage with you at your level, listen without being judgmental and gently nudge you to do the right thing. One of his marked qualities was that he would go out of his way, rework his busy schedule to attend as many family weddings as he could. This was not just limited to the immediate family, but also to the extended and his friends as well. The theme for today is all about legacy and learning from these illustrious individuals. Let me at this point record my gratitude to Murabi Hasnenbai, the Koja Heritage Project team at the World Federation for arranging this event in which we are not only spending time reflecting on the lives of these individuals, but also take an opportunity to learn from their, their lives. I firmly believe that if we took the time out to reflect on the lives of these people, for those who have transitioned to the permanent life, it would not only grow us as individual, but give us an opportunity to enrich our lives with the good things, habits, and the mindset these individuals possessed. It is only through that process that individuals like myself, families and friends, can process this grief and this feeling of loss and channel it into a positive change. I know Dr. Molidina will be speaking after me with a focus on Marhum Mujtaba's communal work, but I wish to shine a light on the legacy of Marhum Mujtaba as the family man. Now, if I started penning down all the life lessons that he imparted to us as a family, over the decades, we would be here for a very long time. What I will try to do is keep it succinct as possible and have limited it to five lessons only. Marhum Mujtaba was a master in his ability to make some of the most impactful and profound points in a succinct manner, something I aspire to do. So number one, family relations are a cornerstone of life. He was a strong advocate of maintaining positive relations with the whole family, both immediate and extended. He practically sowed the seeds in us in various ways. He knew which part of the, you knew which part of the world or the US state he was in by the streams of postcards you would receive from him. I, re I recall when I was growing up in Dar es Salaam, I used to get them, and that is probably how I learned most of the U.S. geography. He would take time out wherever he went, both within the U.S. and globally, to visit family members. He would give up his sleep or comfort if he could squeeze in that one extra family visit and love to share his stories with all of us. Number two, engage and connect at different levels. One of Marhum Mujtaba's amazing strengths was he was able to interweave and communicate with people at all levels. From kids, teenagers, adults, 
professors, professionals, to Molanas alike. He had this amazing gift to be able to put you at ease and have a meaningful and impactful conversation. This was whether he was playing a game of knots and crosses with the kids, solving maths riddles with the teenagers, or having a philosophical discussion about life. His uncanny ability to remember people's names, the names of their children, and what they did was just phenomenal. He met so many people from all walks of life. And his ability to carry on a conversation from the last encounter was just exceptional. He had this ability not only with the family, but also for his work colleagues. And as Murabi Hasnain Bai mentioned, at the recently held memorial event by his employers Aeon, this ability was praised by one of his former peers, who reminisced about every time he met Mujtaba, he would always inquire about his children and how they were doing, particularly in their studies. He truly believed in making and valuing human relations. Number three, education. His zeal and passion for education was embedded in him from his early days, and his push to all his nephews and nieces to study was unparalleled. I recall him asking me about my studies when I was at university and always took a keen interest. Years passed and he would sit with my children and ask them about what they learnt in their primary school as well. Each and every niece or nephew of his, whether immediate or extended, has experienced this about Marhum Mujtaba. You would see a huge grin on his face when any one of us spoke to him about our education in our ambition, and he always encouraged us and others to pursue education and excel at them. For him, education was not just about keeping it to yourself. He pushed us to use our education for greater good of the community and humanity at large. He was a firm believer that one can only excel in life through education, and in fact leaves behind a foundation that will focus on educating the underprivileged. Number four was reading. He was an avid reader. He read everything, Islamic literature, fiction, autobiographies, to actual textbooks. He amassed a large number of books. All of them have been donated to the various libraries in the United States of his own choosing. You would never see him without a book on his many travels and his ability to gift you a book that you needed at that point in time was very uncanny and almost spooky. He had an innate ability to listen, then gift you a book which would support you and grow you in your life. I have been fortunate enough, fortunate enough to be gifted some of these books during his lifetime. Finally, at number five, give back to the community. Marhum Mujtaba was not just a successful actuary, but gave back as much to his Hoja community and the humanity at large. He was one of those silent financial donors that very few knew about, but always in the front line to support the causes close to his heart. However, he believed not only in writing out checks, but giving back through his experience, time, and expertise. There is plenty to say about that, but I will let Dr. Moledina touch upon some of that for in his community achievement. His two books, one of his personal reflections and the diary of Hajj, and his latest book on the actual, actuarial primer, is one of his lasting legacies to both his community and the profession he dearly loved. He was always there to support our community whenever they needed him. And that was true till his last days. He served for the community and his last public presentation was when he spoke at the Toronto Baraza in the last few weeks before he passed away. 
I recall his personal advice to me some time back on one of my many conversations with him. It struck a note and has remained with me till today. He said, when working within the bounds of a community, always remember that your volunteerism revolves around a framework of rules that espouses our values, experience, and history. There will never be a perfect set of governing documents or papers, but we are here to learn to trust each other, to make sound and reasonable judgments, and to respect and support each other and be united as we strive to reach a greater purpose that is larger than ourselves. My prayer is that we are all able to emulate some of his most positive and amazing qualities he displayed in his lifetime so that we can be better humans, but above all, better Shias of the Ahl al-Bayt, alayhum as Majimutaba, today and forever, you will remain within our hearts and the thousands of lives you have touched. May the lives you have touched become your everlasting salvation as you transition to the permanent life. All that you have done for us as a family, your friends, colleagues, and the communities, may that become your greatest asset to allow you to bask in the fragrance of the Ahlul Bayt salam in the shadow of our Lord. O oh Allah, indeed, Mujtaba Hussein Datu is your servant and the son of your servant. He has now become your guest and you are the best of hosts. O oh Allah, we do not know anything except good from him and you are more knowing than all of us. O oh Allah, increase his good deeds multifold, overlook his transgressions, and gather him on the day of judgment in close proximity to the Holy Prophet and his purified holy household. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Shabar. That was very touching, very emotional. Bismillah rahman rahim Assalamu alaikum, my dear viewers and fellow panelists. At the outset, I am grateful to the Khoja Heritage Program of the World Federation for the excellent and remarkable work they've been doing to keep the Khoja spirit alive and creating awareness, especially among our younger generations, who due to no fault of their own have never experienced the Koja magic. Thank you, Asnan Bai, for giving me this opportunity to pay tribute to a dear friend. This afternoon, morning or night, depending from which part of the globe you are viewing this, you are viewing this tribute to these three great personalities of the Koja world who have very recently left us. I had been pondering on the order in which Hasnan Bai had cleverly structured the program to start from the east to west, probably to align with the nature as per the rotation of the sun and the earth. All these great personalities that we have gathered to pay tribute were legends in their own right, starting from Al Haj Munawr Salil, who was a Fakhra Zakirin, who traveled widely, he was a scholar and touched our hearts in various ways. But above all, his humility was outstanding. Mullah Abdul Rasul Hassan Ali Khaki was a fountain of religious knowledge, deeply humble and an amazing teacher who transformed the lives of many. However, our dear Mustafa Hussein Abdul Rasul Datu neither wore an amama, nor a sherwani, nor wore a topi or a long coat, but always appeared in his normal routine attire, yet he was a perfect example of a human being. His impact always to those around him was positive and deep. The Holy Prophet had said, you have not been created to perish, but to remain forever. You only transfer from one home to another when you die. So when our dear brother and friend Mustafa left this temporary abode on the night of Friday, July 30th, 2021, hardly six weeks have passed, and yet it seems so far. 
According to my understanding, he was made to discard the vessel, which we call the body, by the angel of death in order to free his soul, which is internal and never to perish and move into the next realm. All human creations must in their journey for perfection reach a stage that they can by means of their body and intellect endowed by Allah can become a mirror of divine attributes. Mustafa showed all this in action. The best of creation as Allah had intended all these great three personalities we are paying tribute to had attained their stage of near perfection in their own ways. But Mujtaba was unique. As his name, he stood by his name, the selected one or the chosen one among many. I had known Mujtaba from the late 70s when we used to meet at various community meetings. However, it was only from the beginning of this current millennium that I came to know him more and learn from him. I had the privilege to work with Mustafa on various World, World Federation constitutions, reviews and amendments and of the Africa Federation as well as of other Jamaats. His contributions were always far-sighted but based always on the fundamentals of our faith. The greatest impact he had on whomever he met was his amazing humility and understanding. He spoke few words, but when he spoke, one could see and feel that every word of his was measured and constructive. When he met people, he listened to them attentively, showing great interest in the work. My friend Kumail Manji reminds me about Mustafa, and he says, and I quote, Mustafa had an amazing ability of not only hearing your conversations with him, but he listened. His attention to small details that you shared with him were amazing, as was his ability to retain that information. A few years ago, we met for lunch when he was visiting, when he was visiting Dar es Salaam. It was just before Trump was elected president. And, and Kumail says, I commented on how the American political system fascinates me. A few weeks back before his passing, I get a call from someone saying, that he had a parcel from me, from Mustafa. After such a long time, he had come across a book on American politics that he felt would interest me. He bought it, he signed it with a personal message and made sure I got it, unquote. This was Mustafa, genuine, sincere, and lovely. He happened to visit us a couple of years back at our home in Florida. It was a weekend and so all my grandkids were at home. He engaged each one of them separately in conversation at their own levels. They were so impressed by his mannerism and knowledge that I could see the sadness in their faces when I had to tell them that Uncle Mustafa, whom they called Brainy Uncle, had passed away. In 2018, I partnered with him as his doubles partner for the Masumin tournament in Minnesota. And we, we had hoped to continue this for years to come, but Allah had other plans. But he was always encouraging, reminding me that winning or losing was immaterial as long as we had fun and we played in the spirit of sportsmanship. During his last few months, I would call him frequently to inquire about his health. He continued to be positive, and even about two months before his demise, he told me he was walking two miles and playing tennis. When I called him sometimes in May this year, he informed me that now his doctors have advised him that 70% of his liver was involved by the disease. But the tone in which he spoke was of dignified acceptance of the reality, having full trust and confidence in the mercy of his creator. This is the time he spoke to me about his concerns of the needs of the indigenous community in Africa, which Shabar mentioned. He had a passion for education and he leaves a trust which would take care of the needy and especially the education of the African community in Africa because he believed in empowering them. All his charities remain anonymous without any fanfare. In fact, most of you will remember his talk, the future direction and development of a community on the Toronto Baraza Group, which was only on 20th of June, hardly 
five weeks before his demise. This is available on YouTube, and I urge you to look at, look at them and hear it. And this was made possible by Sadiq Alu, whom I requested some recollections of Mustafa as he was near to him in his last months. And I quote from him, difficult as it is to know that you are dying, Mustafa displayed deep faith in accepting his personal passing. We went to the bank and the person handling his account was going in a roundabout fashion about him passing away. Mustafa told him that in his actual practice, he deals with mortality issues every day. And he can tell him about his death as it does not rattle him. We measure a man by how he lives, but when nearing death, he taught us a lot of us how to die with dignity. We saw the deep conviction within and his good side always prevailed. His company had a memorial which Shabar mentioned where 900 people attended. Even the competitors kept saying, we always learn from him and he was the driving force in creating a cordial interaction within the profession. Always kind and ready and to share his knowledge. At his funeral, Said Mahdi Ghazwini remarked that as Muslims, we are always encouraged to seek knowledge and share it for the good of humanity. He said that comment personified Mustafa. He was at the top of his professional accomplishments, but always willing to share his expertise with peers, be they within the company or the competitors. That too with the kindness and very humble demeanor. That endeared him to all that he made and worked with, unquote. So to sum up, my dear viewers, Mustafa taught us and showed us by his mannerism and behavior what a perfect human being is expected to be. He was a living model of perfection. He perfected himself in everything that he did, be his profession of actuary, his sports interests, his community work, and above all, his family. In all the community meetings I've attended with him, I never once saw that he raised his voice. He spoke calmly, but with conviction. He was a living model who showed by his behavior and action with others that one can transform the teachings and the akhlaq of Ahlul Bayt into our own lives. His depth of knowledge of religion was exemplary, and he had a written book on Hajj, a personal journey. Mustafa was well-rounded and he could engage anyone in varied discussions on any subject. And in the end, to end this tribute, I will dedicate a one-minute clip sent to me by his friend Ahmad Alu, which I am really dedicated to Shabar's mother, who is the elder sister. And I would request now the audiovisual team to play that one-minute video, Al-Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Roker Kaha Gore Seab Chese Haberda Ari Aspe Wafada. Sompetu jede ti hume zehra ki kamai ke ti ti zehna jab shehne sawa. Lead 
Jazakallah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Shabar and Dr. Maladina. This was indeed a fitting tribute to our dear friend Mushtaba. Much has been said in the view of time. All I will say is, in conclusion, that the three icons that we have remembered today had two particular qualities in common, which is a signature of the volunteers of the Koja Shia Ethnashi community. One is a passion to serve with Kulus, and the other one is to ensure that they are able to touch lives of the people that are around them. These are the qualities that we have within the community which makes our community what it is today. I ask everyone to remember them with the Surah Fatiha, as I ask Sheikh Saptar Jafar, the president of the World Federation, to share his closing reflection. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of our presenters, Sheikh Abbas, Murabi Musaddiq Bai, Mullah Muhammad, Murabi Ahmad Bai, al Haj Shabar, and Dr. Askar Moladina, and our AV team of Amar and Fatina and Sister Sabira Juma as the head of Marcoms to facilitate the seamless session. And last but not the least, our audience from around the world who have joined us to pay tribute. To learn more about the KHP and participate in curating our history, please visit the World Federation website. And we invite you to visit the Kojapedia, a unique resource to everything Koja. So maybe recite a Surah Fatiha before we listen to the closing remarks by, as I said in Gujarati, Ki Apara Jawan and Joshila Pramukh, Sheikh Safta Jafar, to address us after Surah Fatiha, Al Fatiha. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim wa bihi nasta'in wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ahli baytihi at-tahirin Murabi Dr. Hasnain Bai Walji uh, respected elders brothers and sisters salamun alaykum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh while Dr. Hasnain Bai has thanked the speakers and participants I would like to thank Murabi Hasnain Bai and the Koja Heritage Project team for the initiative of holding this very important event in the memory of an alim, a zakir, and a profound community volunteer. Marhum Mullah Abdul Rasul, a practical alim who could relate with the needs of the grassroots. Fakhru Zakirin, Marhum Munawar Salil, a respected multilingual Zakir with multiplicity of talent, Zakir, a poet and passionate about preserving our culture, language, and faith. And last but not least, Marhum Mujtaba Datu, a profound, passionate community volunteer and intellectual who held integrity of the high standards. I was fortunate to have been close to each of them and knew each of them extremely well. Marhum Mullah Abdul Rasul, my teacher who taught me fiqh in Madrasa in Mombasa, an alim and a reference point, Marhum Munawar Salil, I crave to hear his majalis as he combined Marcia poetry, majlis, and nawha all in one. He spoke from his heart and always spent quality time when he visited Dubai. I always spent quality time when he visited Dubai. And Marhum Mujtabadatu, a fellow actuary, a competitor, yet a thorough professional. I worked with him and was had the privilege of working with him as a counselor at the World Federation Forums in the Strategic Plan Initiative in 2003 at the World Federation. And he was the election commissioner 
during the presidential elections in which I was a candidate. Each of them have been recipients of either World Federation awards or titles. Uh, Marhum Munawar Salil was given the title of Fakhru Zakirin, the pride of our Zakirin, a title given to him by no other than the founder of the World Federation, Marhum Mullah Azgar Rahmatullah. In appreciation of the services of Marhum Mullah Abdul Rasul, the World Federation presented him with the Al Bakr Award. And in appreciation of the services of Marhum Mujtaba Baidatu, the World Federation of the KSIMC presented him with a Lifetime Service Award. And I had the honor, honor and privilege of presenting this award to him just a few weeks before his death. My takeaway in learning from today's session and from what I have known about these great individuals is there is a common thread between each of them the characteristics that we have heard today of humility with khulus. As the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Furqan talks about 14 attributes of the most subservient servant of the most compassionate, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ibadur Rahman, 14 attributes are presented. And the first attribute of those who are the closest servants of Allah, Alladina Yamshuna Alal Ardi Hawna, who walk on this earth with utmost humility. Mullah Abdul Rasul spoke frankly. He performed his wajibat of Amr bil Maruf in black and white. There was no gray area in what he spoke. He never minced his words. He was down to earth. He ran a shop. He interacted with the common man. He spoke their language, yet highly learned and a reference point of jurisprudence in Mubasa. He spoke to kids. He taught to me when I was only 13 years in Madrasa, whilst the elderly craved for his company, we had the privilege that we were taught by him. And this is how simple he was. Marhum Zakir Ali Muhammad and Fakhre Zakirin Munawar by Salil, his humble characteristic manifested in the way he interacted, he recited with passion. And without taking any hadiyas, he had his regular job. When I read history, from the lives of Aimma, it reminds me of the Marsiyas recited by the Abali Khuzai during the time of Imam Rada. In response, when Imam presented with him, to him a hadiya, he responded by saying, Mola, I don't want this hadiya. When Imam insisted, he asked for the, uh, for, for, for the cloth of the Imam salam, so that he could remember the Imam. And as far as Mujtaba Baidatu is concerned, highly learned, intellectual, professional, yet he was soft spoken. With humility and wisdom, he had a tough few days towards the end when some community members pointed fingers at his integrity. He carried out his task professionally as the electoral commissioner of the World Federation with utmost integrity. But he took all this difficulty with utmost humility, no vengeance. And he mimicked and learned from the life and the seerah of the fourth Imam. Replace the animosity of the people of hatred with love. The World Federation is committed to preserving our history and heritage by commemorating the lives of personalities who have had major impact on our community. It is the lessons that we learn from the lives that matter most. I want to once again thank the Koja Heritage Project. And the Markoms team for this initiative, the Koja Heritage Project is the right forum to remember these legends of our community, reaffirming that our culture is deeply rooted in services to humanity, in seeking and imparting knowledge, but most importantly, that gets us together, is that gels us together as a community, in preserving our heritage is the love of the Ahlul Bayt. That is the common thread between each of these three personalities that we have heard today, including the Marcia of Mujtaba Baidatu. All the three exceptionally facilitated, organized, and were passionate about ensuring that our communities continue the sound tradition of expressing our love towards the Ahlul Bayt, Salam Allah Ajma'in. But at the same time, implement the teachings in our lives. As Munawar Salil said, Jo Hussein ko pasand, 
वो मुझे पसंद आई बिन रिक्वेस्टेड टू क्लोज टूडे इस प्रोग्राम विद दुआज इन डेडिकेशन ऑफ द मेमोरीज एंड द सवाब ऑफ द मरहूमीन let us end with the duas of the few verses of makarim al akhlaq those were the very values and characteristics we found in their lives that we have just discussed today allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad wa ajri lin nas ala yadi al khair oh allah let good flow from my hands upon the people and erase it not by making them feel obliged towards me wa habli min maali al akhlaq O oh Allah give me the highest moral traits akhlaq and protect me from pride wa abdilni min baghdati ahli shana'an al muhabba and replace from me the animosity of people of hatred with love wa min hasadi ahli al baghy al mawaddah and the envy of the people of insolence with affection and the suspicion of people of righteousness with trust and the enmity of those close with me with friendship ومن عقوق ذوي الارحام المبرا and the disrespect of whom relatives with devotion and the abandonment of relatives with help and the attainment of flatterers with love set right and the bitterness of fears of wrong doers with seek with sweetness of security the world federation and the entire koja shia ishtashri community is forever indebted to the services of these icons of our community and let us end our program with the recitation of surah al-fatiha rahimallahu man qara al-fatiha